Chris Mann to ever do a randomised controlled trial, and he came up with these various criteria, which I think are particularly useful, um, which can help you just sort of sift through the scientific data and uh, and, and uh, help you um, sort out the crap from the from the good stuff. Uh, so is there a strong association? These are often reported as risk ratios, odds ratios, hazard ratios. The bigger, the more likely it is to be causal. Are there consistent associations? Does one, one group of researchers in one place come up with the same findings as another group of researchers in another place? Uh, does cause come before effect? Um, more exposure equals more disease, or what we call a dose-response relationship. Uh, randomised studies are generally better than observational studies. They don't have randomised studies get around that issue of confounding. Um, and does it make sense? So these are just some common sense kind of criteria, which I tend to hang my hat on when I'm looking at uh, when somebody comes and says, well, I read something in the media about uh, meat consumption causing cancer or something like that. Uh, does it make sense using these criteria? So let's have a look at uh, salt. My, my colleagues go on and on till the cows come home about salt. Uh, they reckon it, it reduces blood pressure. Okay, that's fine. What about survival? Survival is what we're really interested in. Does reducing salt make you live longer? Uh, well, you can pick observational studies which go either way. So I would, I would focus on the randomised study. What does the randomised study show? And uh, there's only one that's been done in patients with heart failure and showed that those people who restrict salt uh, die at three times the rate than those that don't. <laughs> uh, so that kind of... Oh, this is uh, getting a bit uncomfortable for me, but not for the World Health Organization. They're into it, and uh, they've got a whole working group. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a train that just can't be stopped. Um, so how does science go wrong? This, is a, sort of, this question has really uh, bothered me. Um, and, and I think the, the issue we really... Karl Popper put it in this way, is that... Science, uh, for science to uh, progress, you've got to have an idea, and that idea has to be falsifiable. This idea must be, it must be possible to prove this idea wrong if the data don't fit. But if, the, if the idea keeps going despite loads and loads of data going the other way, then this is not good science. So this is how things should work. You can have an idea, you do your little study, you, you see what things are show, and uh, then you go back and you, you refine things and you go, oh crap, that didn't work. Um, I better try something else. Maybe I'll try this low carb thing. But what I've seen is that things don't work in that way generally. Um, that people tend to stick with their ideas throughout their careers, and if something doesn't work, they just go and, oh, we didn't have enough numbers, or, um, we couldn't get them to do what we really wanted them to do, so we, we have to put more resource into it. We have to we have to be we have to sort of get them in a clinic and make sure they're all doing exactly what we want them to do. And, and the problem is ego. People don't really want to change their ideas, particularly if you've got a professor uh, in front of your name and you've got a CV with uh, a million publications. Okay, so let's uh, get off the technical stuff and uh, give you a little bit of my story. Okay, so this is uh, the top floor of the, univers of, the, of the Auckland Museum, and this is what a grocery store in Auckland looked like at the turn of the century, and you can see a little bit of flour in there. Um, not much food at all, actually. There's a couple of boxes of chocolate somewhere. I don't know what uh, Aucklanders ate in the early days. But uh, things have changed a bit since then. Uh, uh, this bloke didn't want me to take the photo, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but you can see that just about everything is very heavily fortified with sugar, um, including the chocolate stuff. Even the ciggies, I've done a bit of research in ciggies. Ciggies have actually got sugar in. Uh, and uh, 
the cereal is um, also heavily fortified with sugar, about 30%, and 